You have made me very angry. Very angry indeed. Marvin, I'm very, very sorry. You know I don't like to upset you. Today on Mr. Media, I'll talk to Andrew Farrago, curator of the Cartoon Art Museum in San Francisco and author of The Looney Tunes Treasury. Stick around, Doc. Hey, did you know that you can listen to the latest Mr. Media show right on your phone with the Stitcher app? Stitcher is smart radio for your smartphone. Mr. Media is on demand and on the go with Stitcher. Download Stitcher for your phone today. Get the free app at www.stitcher.com. That's S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R dot com. So much media. So little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is a Mr. Media interview. You know, MrMedia.com, MRMedia.com. Stop by and check it out. There are nearly 700 archived celebrity interviews for your listening pleasure. The show is brought to you today by the ThePartyAuthority.us. Planning a wedding, mitzvah, or corporate event in the New York, New Jersey, or Pennsylvania area? For any and all occasions, call the Party Authority nationwide at 1-800-DIAL-DJs. That's 1-800-342-5357, where one call does it all. Mr. Media is recorded live before a studio audience of squirrely rabbits in the new new media capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. Yeah. What's up, Doc? Yeah, hey, Bugs. My brother Ira was a Popeye fan. Me, Looney Tunes, all the way. I lost hours of my youth watching Bugs, Daffy, Elmer, Porky, Tweety, The Roadrunner, Sylvester, and Marvin over and over again, the way my daughter once watched The Bear in the Big Blue House when she was that age. But please, don't tell her. I told you that. Please. Anyway, I'm telling you this as a way of introducing my guest, Andrew Farrago. He's the author of a clever new coffee table book, The Looney Tunes Treasury. In it, each illustration-packed chapter is written by Andrew in the voice of a different Looney character, from Bugs and Daffy to Marvin and Tweety. As if that wasn't enough, the treasury is packed with unique collectibles, such as the Acme catalog. You know, that's where super genius Wild E. Coyote gets those great deals on anvils and great duff... And, pardon me, there are Daffy Duck stickers. Boy, I can, re- I can barely even talk. What a maroon! <laughs> what an ignoramus! <laughs> All right, that's really not necessary. I met Andrew five years ago uh, at his day job as the curator of the fabulous Cartoon Art Museum in San Francisco. I was there as a guest speaker that day and had the opportunity to tour the museum's amazing exhibits and awesome gift shop. Next time you're in the Bay Area, in that Bay Area, don't miss it. Andrew Farrago, welcome to Mr. Media. All right. Uh, happy to be here. Good to have you. Hey, you know, Andrew, it's been five years, but I just don't remember you speaking in Brooklynese. How did you write in that voice? Well, yeah, of course, I grew up on the mean streets of New York. And uh, <laughs> no, uh, actually, you know, probably probably the same as you. I, I lived, uh, ate, breathed, et cetera, <laughs> uh, the Looney Tunes cartoons growing up. And uh, you know, I'm I'm a second generation fan. My dad uh actually got to see these cartoons first run in the movie theaters as a kid. And you know, he was he was always quoting Foghorn Leghorn and, and Bugs and Daffy around the house. So uh me, my brothers, uh my dad, we all watched these things uh as much as we could uh when I was a kid. And no, that's not- that's, that sounds like a fun house. Uh, I'm just wondering, would he quote these characters uh, if you were good or if you were bad, or were there different characters for different situations? Uh, generally, uh, you know, generally sort of a, you know, it was it was always a positive thing. Um, Foghorn is is one of his absolute favorites. So, uh, yeah, any uh, you know, anytime anytime one of us did something, uh, you know, pinheaded, he he, he managed to defuse it. Uh, pretty handily with the, with an appropriate quote. So uh, yeah, I, I had I had a lot of this stuff just floating around in my brain, <laughs> uh, and and do do on a daily basis actually. And uh, and then what was the what was the inspiration for telling the uh, the Looney Tunes stories as the characters? Okay, uh, I was I was initially approached to do to do this by um, local publisher named Insight Editions. 
And they basically ended up packaging the book, and it was ultimately published uh, by Running Press. And they they approached me with it, and they said, you know, there we we want to do a Looney Tunes art book. We want it to be a history book as well, but we 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 feel that that's that material has been covered pretty well. There've been uh, books by Jerry Beck. There've been you know biographies, autobiographies, and it's you know it's been it's been covered. It's been covered very well, uh, but we want to do something that's going to be a little more fun, a little more accessible. We wanted to reach younger audiences as well as longtime fans. So they they suggested it as more of a creative writing project where I would be, uh, you know, doing the, uh, relating the autobiographies of the Looney Tunes characters themselves uh, in their in their own voices. And, and, uh, and before, but yeah, I know it's a radio show, and I, I can't actually do these in their own voices. <laughs> so I, oh. I suggest that that's a yeah, that's a writing thing, not a not a vocalization. <laughs> I don't I don't want I don't want to insult the ghost of Mel Blanc by making the attempt there. Well, and it's funny, and I I mean no disrespect at all, but it's funny that that you wrote in that voice, but speaking to you. I mean, you're you're very much the muse- museum curator. <laughs> yes, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I, I don't mean any disrespect when I say that, but it is interesting. I, you know, I didn't remember. Um, I, I just couldn't picture the Andrew Farrago that I met five years ago doing voices. It just didn't seem like you. But I only met you, you know, in passing. Yeah. So I thought, well, he's going to come on and do Foghorn. Okay, I'm ready. It's uh yeah it's, it's, it's there's an on off switch so when I when I'm when I'm in professional mode you know that's when the suit comes off and uh, or suit goes on actually and uh, you know when it when it comes time to uh, to write Bugs Bunny I pull out the carrot and uh, sit down at the type <laughs> the typewriter and have a giant mallet and uh, you know a stack of dynamite ready to go uh, probably watch uh, some Gallagher and. Um... <laughs> I, well, you know, I think I, I got to compliment you. The, uh, you know, when I started reading, I, I think Bugs is the first chapter. Um, when I started reading, and I realized, and you realize pretty quickly that it's in the voice of, of these uh, these cartoon characters. I thought, oh my god, this is like, <laughs> this is this is the kind of project where it's like, hmm, you know, I think I'll remake some Beatles songs. Uh, it, it it had to be a little daunting to sit down and try to put your head your 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 own head in their heads or something like that. Uh, yeah, definitely. The uh, yeah the the story I have to tell about that is my my editor uh, Kevin Toyama from uh, Insight Editions. Uh, our, our initial discussion about this was yeah it should be it should be a really fun project and you're going to get into the heads of these characters. You're going to tell their life stories in their own words. But if you get it wrong, it's probably going to stink. <laughs> uh, so he, he he warned me, you know, if some if if you did this with anything less than you know total respect for the characters, if you didn't get the voices, if you didn't understand them, you know, it, it could be a really really awful book. He stressed that uh, multiple times. Just yeah, no no pressure at all. But you've got. You know, you've got these characters that are beloved worldwide, and that's that's part of what. Um, well, uh, part of part of what made me take on the project was I don't think things through before I say yes. Uh, so <laughs> I'd, I'd agreed to do it before I realized quite how intimidating it was. And another, yeah, another thing was uh, these are characters I care about. These are characters that my family cares about, and. I, I knew that I would approach them with the, you know, with the proper respect. I knew that I uh, would hate reading a book where Bugs Bunny didn't sound like Bugs Bunny, where Yosemite Sam wasn't ornery enough, <clears throat> where where Daffy wasn't Daffy enough. And so, yeah, just um, love love of the characters really uh, made me sign on to this project. And then, how did you actually accomplish it? I mean, did you obviously? I know you, I know you had to watch a lot of cartoons for this, but did you do additional research? Did you, or did it did it all come from you know just submerging yourself uh, in in uh, in the cartoons? 
Okay, there is, uh, I'm, and I've, I've heard this from other animators, and they're they're happy about this, but there is there's a lot of history hidden in there. So it's I wanted I wanted this to not just be the characters goofing around. I did want them to talk about the history of the studios, to talk about some of the very talented artists and writers and performers who worked on these cartoons over the years. And so I think it I think it holds up as a history book. And to that I, I already mentioned Jerry Beck. Uh so I read his work. There were people like Charles Solomon, Michael Barrier, uh Leonard Malton who who've written wonderful books <clears throat> excuse me, on the on the history of Warner Brothers. And yeah, as you mentioned, there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of cartoon watching. So I, I pulled out the uh, the Golden Collection DVDs. Uh, there are anything missing from there uh, seems to be floating around on YouTube. So I watched and, like I said, lived, breathed these characters. Uh, wrote down any any bit of dialogue that I think I could possibly incorporate into a character's mm -hmm. history. I, I took a lot of, uh, you know, if you go through, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, if you go through, you'll find um, a lot of Bugs Bunny's uh, dialogue comes from cartoons like uh, What's Up Doc and, you know, Hair Grows in Brooklyn and mm -hmm. cartoons like that. So and anything that directly reference the character's past. I was taking notes on it. And <clears throat> anything that uh anything I thought I could use, any anything that any line that sounds like that can probably relate to a character's uh time working with the studio, uh, I would write that down. And so really it it sounds it sounds like I was trying to write as little as possible. I was trying to just take as much <laughs> of uh, you know the dialogue from from people like Ted Pierce and Michael Maltese, and uh, incorporate it into the book. But uh, that's yeah, that's a lot of what I did, and that I think is is how I really captured the characters' voices. As I was, you know, copying, uh, I was I was I was taking as much dialogue as I could from uh, existing sources. Well, and I, it, you know, thinking about, you know, the book, uh, and thinking, okay, if it were me, how would I do it? And I think that's exactly what I suspected. Uh, but I was also thinking, I was thinking about uh, uh, who killed Roger Rabbit, and I was thinking, you know, this would make a great book for someone uh, with a lot of ambition to adapt using uh, this, the, the histories that you've told in these characters' voices and match match them up with maybe some. Uh, you know, historic footage, that kind of thing. It make a great kind of a docu kind of a quasi documentary of uh, Looney Tunes. Yeah, that's uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's very nice to hear. I'm not. Um, I'm a quick plane flight away from Hollywood. If there are any executives listening to this, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would. Not, uh, yeah, I'd love to be in the director's chair and uh, have the have the giant megaphone and the beret and everything and. Uh, you know, bark out orders at Tweety Bird and and the Roadrunner. <laughs> now, how? I mean, I would think like Bugs and and Daffy would be fairly easy because obviously they've been the star of more 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 of these uh, Looney Tunes than anyone else. But someone like Marvin the Martian, who has not been in that many, you 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 did him too, though. Uh, was there enough existing material? Did you have to kind of stretch your imagination a little bit? Okay, uh yeah, characters like Marvin and Taz uh and Witch Hazel were in just just a handful of cartoons during the classic era. Uh and that's that was really my focus. I wasn't looking too much at, at more recent things. I hadn't even seen uh Looney Tunes back in action uh hmm. before I'd written the book. Um Space Jam I still haven't seen actually. <laughs> Confession time. <laughs> um so there were characters like that, but I think it's uh, it's it's really a testament to the um, the creators how how well they were able to develop these characters over the course of just a few short cartoons. So Marvin, it, it was it was pretty easy to get into his head. Uh, I you know took every possible quote that I could incorporate into the text from his cartoons, and obviously that fell short a little bit. Because um, it's it's not like Bugs Bunny where you have 
over 100, uh, close to 200 to pick from. But, um, you know, Chuck Jones, Michael Maltese, uh, these guys made really lasting characters. Um, Michigan J. Frog was only in one cartoon, but that cartoon made such a huge impact on everybody. It was his, the WB Network's corporate spokesman or, uh, or spokes frog uh, <laughs> during that, mm. during that uh, short-lived era of Warner Brothers history. And they managed to do that. They managed to take a character in less than seven minutes and make it something uh, that had a huge lasting impression on me, millions of viewers. Um, George Lucas was obviously a big fan. Uh, Mm -hmm. Mel Brooks, if you've seen Spaceballs, was a huge fan of that cartoon. Mm -hmm. And that's that's just really the power of these characters. So even uh, if Marvin the Martian had only been in one or two cartoons... um, you know, he was only in about four or five of them. Uh, that probably still would have been enough for me to write uh, a shorter chapter on him. Hmm. Well, um, Andrew, let's uh, let's take a quick break here. Um, this is uh, Bob Andelman, and you're listening to the uh, Mr. Media Radio interview with Cartoon Art Museum curator uh, Andrew Farrago, author of The Looney Tunes Treasury. And we will be right back. You're just despicable. Um, Daffy, that wasn't really very nice. Hi, this is Joe Murray, creator of Rocco's Modern Life and Camp Laszlo. You're listening to Mr. Media. So that wasn't so tough. No. (laughs) In this season of hope, you can do something extraordinary. Join your neighbors and the American Red Cross and help save the day. When the next disaster strikes, when a neighbor's house burns down, if someone needs life-saving blood, or the comfort of a helping hand. Hope. Support the American Red Cross and help save the day. Visit redcross.org. This is a public disservice message from the National Lampoon Radio Hour. Don't waste your evenings doing volunteer work at your local mental hospital. Remember, even if you do, the crazy people there will probably think you didn't. Words to live by. This is Bob Andelman, and you're listening to the Mr. Media Radio Interview with Cartoon Art Museum curator Andrew Farrago, author of The Looney Tunes Treasury. Um, Andrew, let's tell folks a little bit about your day job uh, at the museum. Uh, what do you do all day? I mean, watch cartoons? What Sounds like a great job. <laughs> that's the, uh, yeah, that's the uh, immediate reaction that most people hear. Uh, any, anytime you have cartoon in your job title, uh it's yeah i have to i have to admit it is it is a fun job uh there is there is a lot of work uh too uh i'm i'm basically uh i maintain the museum's collection i have to plan exhibitions out sometimes two or three years uh in advance uh so there's a lot of contacting artists uh people who collect comic art uh movie studios and there is grant writing, there is fundraising, there is, um, you know, I, I am the volunteer coordinator. I, I work on the um, scheduling the cartoon art classes that we do here at the museum. So it's, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty busy, <laughs> pretty busy day job. Uh, it's a, we're, we're a nonprofit organization. Uh, and have a have a very small staff, so we all yeah we all work forty plus hours every week, uh, making the world safe for cartoons. <laughs> and where does one go to get a job like yours? Tune you? I uh, personally I went to uh, Colorado College. Uh, grew up and I grew up in Ohio. Went to a proud graduate of Wellington High School. And went to Colorado College and studied fine art. And so you're saying it's kind of a Mickey Mouse school? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I'll stop now. I'm done. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Mickey, Mickey Mouse school is actually uh, that'll probably be another project <laughs> somewhere <laughs> down the road. Um, yeah, uh, but I, I really I couldn't have anticipated that I'd be doing this. Um, 
I was I was always a, a cartoon and comic fan as a kid. Um, but basically, over the years, I, I just pieced together enough um, enough elements of my background that I was I was the right person for this job uh, when it came along. Uh, my dad is a, my dad's a contractor, so I have building experience, which was useful in um, you know that's that's useful in maintaining the galleries and installing exhibitions. And I've got. Um, you know, some gallery background from college, and also working at the at the nearby Berkeley Art Museum, mm. and it was yeah a little bit a uh, little bit of everything basically, and uh, encyclopedic knowledge of Bugs Bunny and Spider Man and uh, you know any any number of other things. And do you have some favorite items in the uh, collection at the museum? Oh, we've uh, we've got a lot of great things. Uh, we've got um, let's see, we've got about 20 original peanut strips that were donated mm-hmm. to us uh, by Charles Schultz and his wife over the years. And we've got uh, we've got a Thimble Theater Sunday strip, and that's that's um, Popeye for those of you who aren't familiar with <laughs> the name Thimble Theater uh, by its by its creator E.C. Seagar. And actually, right now, I'm, I'm uh, believe it or not, gearing up for a Looney Tunes exhibition that's opening up at the end of this week. Shocking! So, what a coincidence! Yes. yes. <laughs> so we, uh, in addition to our permanent collection, uh, mm-hmm. our, <laughs> sorry, suffering <and> succotash. <laughs> <laughs> we got one out of you. There you yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> in, in addition to our uh, permanent collection, uh, I'm. You know, I'm traveling the world all the time. I'm going to uh, things like the uh, meeting with members of the National Cartoonist Society. Uh, I'm going to comic conventions all the time and meeting with artists and collectors and finding out uh, basically what's what's out there and available that will make interesting um, uh, make for interesting exhibitions. And thanks to this book, I was actually able to make contact with uh, Robert McKimson Jr. Uh, son of the famed Warner Brothers director Robert McKimson, uh, and nephew of Charles and um, blanking on the other name, uh, Charles and it's not Bob. Um, I'll think of it in a minute here. <laughs> uh, but he, uh, yeah, Charles and I think Ted McKimson, uh, and also the son of animator uh, Sam Nicholson. Uh, so I've been able to make contact with these people and access their collections, and um, we've got a, a really fun exhibition coming up of um, animation artwork, uh, concept artwork. We've got a lot of great background concepts by Maurice Noble. Uh, so that is going to be a really fun exhibition, and, and I'm yeah, just always always get- on the prowl for new stuff. <laughs> Okay, and you guys get a lot of uh, have a lot of special events there. You have a lot of speakers, I guess, for people who you know don't know. Yes, uh, just last week we had Teddy Newton uh, from Pixar. He directed the uh, great short Day and Night that uh, precedes Toy Story Three. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he gave a talk and uh, discussed his career in animation. Uh, we did a we did a screening of uh, Day and Night immediately before that. Uh, so we have we have fun people like that. We've had uh, superhero comic book artists. We've had people who are more uh, like yourself, more in the uh, historical research aspect of it. Uh, we have had, and we'll have again, animators. And it's yeah, it's, we we have uh, pretty much at least once a month we have at least some event or opportunity for people to come in and meet people who. Uh, Create cartoons and comics, or uh, really know their stuff. <laughs> Again, people like, people like yourself pass through uh, all the time, and we have a uh, yeah as, as as active a presentation schedule as we're able to manage. Very good. Well, um, folks, listen. You can uh, you can find Andrew Farago's new book, 
the Looney Tunes Treasury. It's a lot of fun uh, at great bookstores everywhere, or you can order it right now at a great price at mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. And next time you're in San Francisco, don't miss visiting the Cartoon Art Museum. Or you can visit its website right now. It's cartoonart.org, O-R-G. Uh, Andrew, can uh, folks find you on uh, Facebook or Twitter or any of those places? Uh, yes, there is a there's a Looney Tunes Treasury page on Facebook. Uh, the Cartoon Art Museum has a, a, a nice popular page on Facebook as well, and is on Twitter. Uh, I'm just Andrew Farago um, on Twitter and on Facebook, so should be should be pretty easy to track down. Very good. Well, um, Andrew. Uh uh, you were very kind to me five years ago. I hope maybe we do a little bit small return favor now. But thanks so much for joining us in Mr. Media today. Okay. Well, thanks uh, Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a, it's a pleasure to be anywhere. <laughs> all right. And you know this is coming. Porky had something to say to you. <laughs> thanks, Andrew. All right. Thanks, Bob. Bye-bye. Bye. And for more original interviews with your favorite animators, cartoonists, comics creators, and comics historians – Surf over to our main website, mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. Subscribe to Mr. Media on iTunes and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews from within iTunes and subscribe for free. You can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many locations. If you've got an idea for a guest, a comment on today's show, or would like to advertise on Mr. Media Radio, email me directly at bob at mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. You can also follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, twitter.com slash Andelman, or on Facebook, just search Mr. Media Interviews. Thanks so much for joining us today. Always appreciate you give up a piece of, time, piece of your day and come spend it with us. Folks, thanks for listening. What a maroon. <laughs> what an ignoramus. <laughs> that just really wasn't very nice.